controversial topic be next. Parliament is investigating how so-called Sharia courts operate here in the United Kingdom. Home Affairs Select Committee is hearing evidence on whether they need tighter regulation. What do you think? One report estimated that there are at least, here we go, 85 Sharia bodies in the UK, but the UK Board of Sharia Council said the true extent unknown. The UK's official body has around 15 members affiliated but could not force others, were told, to join. More than 100 Muslim women have complained about the parliamentary inquiry itself, saying they're being treated as political footballs. So does this parallel, parallel legal system, as it's known, need tighter regulation and what role should they play in public life? Joining me to discuss this in more detail is Gita Segal, Director of the Centre for Secular Space and Abdullah Al-Andalusi, co-founder of the Muslim Debate Initiative. Thank you both for joining us here on Sky News this afternoon. Gita, to you, first of all, if I may, what does Sharia law mean to you? When you think about Sharia law, what do you think? Um, well, Sharia law means many, many things, in fact, but the forms of Sharia law that we find being operated in Britain by uh, these uh, Sharia councils is, in fact, a very discriminatory form of law. And it's among the worst um, uh, forms of Sharia that are found anywhere where family law uh, Sharia principles, so-called Sharia principles, are used for family law. Um, women are often treated as minors in the courts in need of a guardian. They're treated in very discriminatory ways. Um, they're told that they, there's been a huge collapse of civil marriages in Britain. Things are going backwards for Muslims in this country, uh, where fewer and fewer marriages are registered, and therefore women often find themselves stuck uh, where they've had uh, nikah, that is, um, a, a, a Muslim marriage. Uh, and there wouldn't be anything wrong with that, except that uh, they don't find their rights protected uh, under British civil law. And even if they've had civil marriages, uh, they're often bullied into having so-called Sharia divorces when they want to divorce, not just a civil divorce, uh, because uh, it's claimed that the, the British civil divorce isn't enough. Okay. In other words, Sharia law is a parallel legal system operating in this country. Okay, let's bring in Abdullah Al Andalusi. Thank you very much indeed for joining us also, sir. Uh, what does it mean to you, Sharia law? We've heard the suggestions that it's uh, very discriminatory against women. Well, I would strongly disagree with it, it, uh, the, the claims that Sharia law discriminates against women. Uh, I would say that many studies, one by Dr. Samia Bano of the University of Reading, funded by the Ministry of Justice, concluded that the majority of Sharia councils appear to have a primary role of helping Muslim women to obtain a religious divorce, and that the organization surveyed sought to avoid a conflict with the state and did not appear to have any desire to replace civil mechanisms and fears that councils are forming a parallel legal system appear to be unfounded. So a state-funded uh, investigation by Dr. Samia Abano concluded, uh, contrary to what my, my, my colleague is saying, Sharia is, is basically the religious law of uh, Muslims. Jews have the Halakha system and they have Beit Deen uh, arbitration councils and uh, and so on so they have which is, which is a very comparable law and yet no one is talking about about that because Muslims seem to be obviously under always under the spotlight due to what many have highlighted as a demonization of the Muslim community according to one uh, a barrister a Jewish barrister of a Beit Deen David Frey said that there is demonization of the Muslim community so that was his opinion so I think all these pretensions of seeking justice for women is really a smokescreen to, uh, for a so-called secular state that's meant to be impartial with religion, imposing and interfering in the affairs, the, reli the religious life of a minority community in, in the country. Okay, Gita, um, Gita Segal, around 3 million Muslims in the United Kingdom, about 45%, 5% or thereabouts of the population. Uh, a law that is recognised, therefore, by up to 5% of the population, does it have a place? No, that's not true. That's not true. It's not, re you, you cannot assume that because somebody is religiously a Muslim, that they want to be controlled by Muslim fundamentalists. 
the fact is that in our coalition, which is a secular coalition, the one law for all, there are many believers as well as many ex-Muslims and many people of different nationalities who are indeed worried that if the government reg decides that they're going to recognize the Sharia councils, because I think your question was, is tighter regulation the issue? I think there's a zero tolerance that the government needs to have for the discriminatory practices of Sharia councils. Regulating them means recognizing them and in fact endorsing many of those practices uh, uh, by saying that they regulate them but in fact endorsing them. What, what the government has done is, for instance, issue, made a regulatory body for the mos mosques and imams. Uh, and that regulatory body was okay. filled with fundamentalist organizations and failed to regulate anything. Okay, the Abdullah, same thing Abdullah, will happen with Sharia okay, councils. Okay, uh, Abdullah, who do you think that you are representing? I'm not here to represent anyone. Uh, I'm merely stating facts and evidence, such uh, genderless facts and evidence, such as the Arbitration Act of 1986, Section 33, which guarantees that English law overrules any arbitration tribunals. The judge can dismiss or disregard any verdict from a, a tribunal any tribunal of, of any kind, that, that, and they regularly that would do. That be very good if women went to tribunals. That the point is well, that people are being well, deterred from seeking their rights within a course. And in fact, there's some evidence that the Muslim arbitration tribunals are taking cases to be mediated, cases that uh, of domestic violence that should have gone to the courts, and are persuading women to drop their cases in mediation. There's very disturbing well, evidence that the police well, are working with these bodies, and that other, uh, other groups are working with the bodies, and that local councils want to work with them because they may be useful, for instance, in the Prevent program or something like that. Okay. And I, well, and on the, one the largest point, Muslim, Gisa, largest Muslim Gisa, women's Gisa, network. Let Abdullah, right let, let Abdullah join in as well because it is a debate, yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah, but it, the, the largest Muslim women's organization, the Muslim Women's Network UK, has issued concerns about these reviews. Uh, it was already mentioned by, that, that Shaista Goh has said that it seems that women are being, Muslim women are being used as political footballs. The, uh, she also added that any that basically it seems that the shutting down or this, this kind of investigation the Sharia Council seems to be using women's rights as a guise to further an anti-faith agenda. The so-called zero tolerance policy of that my colleague just mentioned is in reality a secular intolerance against people's religious rights. The English can courts I, are available I, for I, everyone I to seek a recourse. It? Wait one second, please. Let me finish. Uh, English courts are open to anyone to seek their rights and their recourse uh, rights according to English law. Tribunals and sh councils are not, they're not called Sharia courts, by the way. They have no legal binding effect. There is no police or uh, unofficial police that, that enforces the, the, their, their uh, in essence, advice, advice. They are merely a facility that the Muslim community can use if they so want, if all parties agree, to seek arbitration. There are many other types of uh, relationship and advice organizations which obviously no one has a problem with like okay. uh, relate okay. Okay. Uh, relate okay. and um, let me, uh, let me we get your point go you yeah so Couples connection. Uh, Mr. Al Al Andalusi has made a perfect example of the way in which people running the Sharia councils are rebranding themselves. And they're now saying that they, you know, this is all consensual and uh, what they're giving is just advice. What they actually do, and Elam Manea, who has done a much more recent, much more thorough, and much better study than Samia Banu, uh, has said that the Sharia councils are, in effect, operating a parallel legal system and operating a very, very discriminatory version of Sharia law, which is one of the most uh, uh, one of the most discriminatory forms of Sharia law operating anywhere in the world. Okay. Um, and she's done a comparative legal study of that. Okay. Now, you know, one thing I do agree with uh, uh, Mr. Andalusi about is that we, as a coalition, called for the government to actually investigate all forms of parallel legal systems. We didn't want a simple inquiry only into Sharia law. There is a specific problem because I don't know any other religion that has such an extensive form of councils which are no Known to give um, very discriminatory advice and to actually harm Muslim women. We have examples of Muslim women being put at risk whose uh, addresses, for instance, had been concealed uh, in the civil courts because they had, um, were at risk of domestic violence okay. from their husbands, and okay. they have been put at risk by Sharia councils, okay. in fact, subjected to okay. rape. Okay, Abdullah, I'm interested to know how you can compare, relate um, to, you know, uh, Sharia law with you know, some medieval punishments uh, at its most extreme with, you know, amputation of limbs, death by stoning, etc. How on earth can you compare it to relate? How does the, the, the operation of Sharia councils when they provide relationship advice, how does that relate anything to 
punishment system or penal system or, or anything. They're completely unconnected, and it's 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 uh, ridiculous so you are, you, to you're uh, mention you're those things when it because comes the Sharia, Sharia councils, the Sharia. No, no, the Sharia councils aren't implementing any penal system. They're not implementing a law. Should They're they not be allowed a, a court to? system. Sorry? Should they be allowed to? Should they be allowed to law? They're not. The law of the land is the, uh, is the law of England and Wales. That is the operating law of the land. The courts, the English courts can overrule any tribunal decision on any matter. The, the Section 33 of the, tri of the Arbitration Act guarantees the that, and they have implemented it. So. So the, considering the, that English the, courts, in, considering, let me finish, let me finish, please. Considering that English courts are fully empowered to uh, disregard any, any kind of uh, advice by tribunals on any case or any matter, then all this uh, is issue only amounts to scaremongering, as has been uh, mentioned by a number of organizations, uh, including the largest Muslim women's body in the UK. Okay. So I think that these well, are issues actually, uh, which you have to, have to listen Muslim to. Muslim women's bodies and, and the Muslim Women's Network gave evidence at the Select Committee yesterday in which they said they welcomed both inquiries. So perhaps they should be asked why in one place they say it's scaremongering and another place they say they welcome both inquiries. We initially welcomed the government inquiry. However, we think that it is a very secretive inquiry, which is a theological inquiry. And in fact, we're very disappointing that it's only inquiring into Sharia law. Because if the government opens the way for regulations of Sharia councils, which in fact will not regulate them. What it will okay. do will endorse them and make them respectable. And that will open the way for all sorts of other bodies among Hindus, Sikhs, and other people, and in okay. fact, Christian evangelicals. It, it's called people's whoa, 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 whoa. right to hold private on a hold practice on a of their religion. Abdullah, hold on a second, Gita. Yeah. Uh, you started, so uh, we have to give the last word to Abdullah. What would you like to say uh, to round up this debate, please, Abdullah? But all I'll say is that um, all this really amounts to is um, interference by a supposedly neutral body, the UK government, into people's religion and private affairs. If anyone is being discriminated against um, by intimidation, threats of violence, then the police and the courts should uh, enter into that and prevent that from happening. The English courts are not beholden to any other uh, court or law system. So there is real no threat of any parallel legal system. All there is is that you have these uh, private and independent uh, or okay. institutions which arise from uh, different minority communities, Sharia councils and Beit Deen in the Jewish community, okay. which are, are basically people who want to enact their, their right to a religious life without interference okay. from, uh, from secularists. Got it. Uh, informative and lively debate from both of you. Thank you both very much indeed for joining us on Sky News this afternoon. Thank you. Still to come on the programme for you this afternoon.